In this video, we're going to look at finding intercepts of linear equations, quadratic equations, square root equations, and absolute value equations. This is just going to be a general overview, so it won't be super comprehensive. But let's talk about what intercepts are. So intercepts, if we draw a coordinate plane, the intercepts are any point, so the x-intercepts are any point along the x-axis, and y-intercepts are any point that lie on the y-axis. X-intercepts are always of the form a comma zero. So if you want to find x-intercepts, what you would do is you would uh, set y equal to zero, because that's going to be true for every x-intercept. Every x-intercept has a y-coordinate uh, that's zero. So to find x-intercepts, set y equal to zero. Any y-intercept would be of the form zero comma b. So if we want to find the y-intercepts of a graph, we would set x equal to zero, because what's true about y-intercepts is that every x-coordinate will equal zero. In our first two examples, we have one linear equation, that would be 3x minus 4y equals 12, and we have one quadratic equation, x squared equals negative y plus 25. It is quadratic, although it does look a little weird. If we're going to find the uh, intercepts of our linear equation to find the x-intercept, we will set y equal to zero. So that would be 3x minus 4 times 0 equals 12, which would be 3x minus 0, so I'm just going to write 3x equals 12. Divide both sides by 3, and we get x equals 4. To write the x-intercept out, we would write 4 comma 0. To find the y-intercept, we will set x equal to 0. So that would be 3 times 0 minus 4y equals 12. 3 times 0 is 0, and 0 minus 4y is negative 4y, so we get negative 4y equals 12. Divide by negative 4, and we end up with y equals negative 3. There's that line again. y equals negative 3. So we have an x-intercept of 0, 4, oh, excuse me, of 4, 0, and a y-intercept of 0, negative 3. Anytime we have a slanted line, there should be two intercepts unless there's only one, in which case it's the origin. Okay, over to our quadratic equation. So if we're going to find the x-intercept or intercepts, then what we're going to do is we're going to set y equal to 0. So that would be x squared equals negative 0, which is just 0, plus 25. So x squared equals 25. To get x by itself, we would take the square root of both sides. When we take the square root of a constant, we do add the plus or minus. And not that extra line. Loves that extra line right there. Okay, so the square root of x squared is x, and the plus or minus square root of 25 is 5. So it turns out we have two x-intercepts. The x-intercepts are negative 5, 0, and 5, 0. Okay, and now we're going to find the y-intercept. To find the y-intercept, we will plug in 0 for x. So we would say 0 squared equals negative y plus 25. 0 squared is 0, and then to get uh, y by itself, I'm going to add y to both sides. That way I can make y positive, and it saves me one step. And then I'm done because I have y equals 25. So the y-intercept here would be 0, 25. And over here. Okay, let's look at a few more examples. Here we're going to find the x and y intercepts of square root functions. So to find the x-intercept, we will plug in 0 for y, so that would be 0 equals the square root of x plus 3. There's our mysterious line that seems to like to come and show up. Okay. So now we have to get x out of the radical, and the only way we can do that is to square both sides. So we're going to square the 0, and we're going to square the square root of x plus 3. 0 squared is 0. The square and the square root cancel, and we're left with x plus 3. We'll subtract 3 from both sides, and that gives us negative 3 equals x. So here we have an x-intercept of negative 3, 0. Next, to find the y-intercept, we're going to plug in 0 for x. So the y-intercept will be x equals 0. That would be y equals the square root of 0 plus 3. 
That would just be the square root of three. We can't simplify that. So we're gonna say that the y-intercept is zero comma root three. Okay, for our second example, to find the x-intercept, actually this is the fourth example, we're gonna say y equals zero. So that'd be zero equals three x minus one, the square root of that. To undo that square root, we're gonna square both sides, giving us zero equals 3x minus 1. Now to get x by itself, I'm going to add 1 to both sides. That will be 1 equals 3x. Divide both sides by 3. And we end up with x equals 1 third. So over here, the x-intercept is 1 third comma 0. To find the y-intercept, we plug in 0 for x. So that would be y equals the square root of 3 times 0 minus 1. That would be y equals the square root of negative 1. That is not a real number. That is an imaginary number that indicates to us there is no y-intercept. So up here we're going to come up here and we're going to say for y-intercept none. That just means that this graph does not cross the y-axis. Okay and lastly let's look at some absolute value equations and figure out the intercepts of these. These can be a little bit tricky so be careful. Okay first to find the x-intercepts we will plug in 0 for y, so we end up with 0 equals the absolute value of 4x minus 5. There is exactly one intercept because an absolute value can equal 0 in one way, and that's when the absolute value itself is equal to 0. So we're going to take what's inside the absolute value and set it equal to 0. I'm going to add 5 to both sides, that's 4x equals 5, divide both sides by 4, and we get x equals 5 over 4 which we might write as 1 and 1 fourth or 1.25. Okay, so the one x-intercept was located at 1 and 1 fourth comma 0. To find the y-intercept, we will plug in 0 for x. So that would be y equals the absolute value of 4 times 0 minus 5. And now we simplify the expression. 4 times 0 is 0. 0 minus 5 is negative 5. The absolute value of negative 5 is 5. So we have a y-intercept at 0, 5. And we're going to pretend like that line didn't just happen because it did. Okay, so there's the intercepts for our first absolute value. For our second absolute value equation, to find the x-intercept or intercepts, get out of there, we will say y equals 0. So that would be 0 equals negative absolute value of x plus 3. For the negative, we really should get rid of it. We would divide both sides by negative 1. Uh, when we divide 0 by negative 1, that just leaves us with 0. So we can say 0 equals the absolute value of x plus 3. And now, again, there's only one way that the absolute value could equal 0, and that's what, when the expression inside is equal to 0. So we're going to say x plus 3 equals 0. Therefore, x equals negative 3. So the x-intercept for this last example is negative 3, 0. Now to find the y-intercept, we will plug in 0 for x. That's going to give us y equals the negative absolute value of 0 plus 3. 0 plus 3 is 3, and the absolute value of 3 is 3, but then that negative is in front of it, so we negate it, and we end up with a y-intercept at negative 3. So y-intercept is 0, negative 3. And that's how we find x and y-intercepts.